Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. So this new Fender model was just way too cool not to review and demo. So even though nobody knew Guitar Day purchased this one, which if you're interested in seeing a new guitar on the show, you can check out my website for some more details. But I can usually help you save the sales tax and get the guitar reviewed on the show and everybody just wins. But inside here sleeps the 60th anniversary Jaguar. Now, if you've been watching the show, you might be saying, hey, didn't you already review this? No, that was the Ultra Lux version. This one in here is the more traditional style. So we'll do a quick recap of that once we take a look at this for the first time but i'm really excited to see this in person because they look so fantastic in like fender's marketing materials and their stock photos so i'm really looking forward to taking a look at this very cool jaguar oh yeah that is blinging i love it <laughs> So first off, check out this sparkling mystic Lake Placid blue finish. It's exactly what I love in a sparkle blue guitar. It's not too bright, it's not too dark, it's right in between. And that red tortoiseshell pickguard here really complements that color. And wow, that fretboard is gorgeous. That is good. It's really streaky and red, kind of reminds me of some Brazilian rosewood. Obviously, it's not Brazilian. But let's go ahead and uh, learn a little bit about these 60th anniversary Jaguars. So, in the year 1962, Fender comes out with this new thing. They called it a Jaguar. At the time, it was the top-of-the-line Fender solid body model. So, for the 60th anniversary in 2022, they decided to reissue it, but not reissue the 62 style <laughs> for some reason. So, we get the regular ones at 2500 being offered in Mystic Dakota Red and Mystic Lake Placid Blue. Obviously, I chose blue because it's absolutely gorgeous, but if you like red, you might enjoy that other one. Fender's website says this model will be available in very limited numbers, and to my surprise, you can't actually buy these anymore. I'm really glad I got my pre-order in when I did. It seems most of the major dealers are no longer accepting pre-orders on these. Then there's the Ultra Lux version at the same price. That one got stainless steel frets and extended scale length, the Texas T finish, humbuckers, basically just a whole bunch of high performance specs. It was more so a jazz master, but you can check out this review and demo if you want to learn more about that beast. So despite this being the 60th anniversary of the Jag and the fact that this is like the more so traditional one out of the lineup, it has a lot more 66 specs to it, at least as far as like the block inlays go. The original Jaguars did not have that. So that's pretty much the big controversy behind this model. Why didn't they do a true 62? I don't know. Let's just appreciate this for what it is because it is awesome. So cosmetics aside, it looks like we just got two regular Jag style pickups. We actually have a little bit of a mute right here. I don't think I've seen that before. Looks like we got a little switch right here that you can push that up to kind of mute the sounds of the strings. And of course, we've got the binding on the neck, the round lamb fretboard that we'll learn a little bit more about. It's got the whole fancy rhythm lead circuit, all the switches that you could possibly want. So, so far, I'd say first impressions, it's pretty much exactly what I was expecting. Matching headstock, all blinged out, USA made. Very fancy. All this for 2,500 bucks. I really appreciate the fact that they went as far as doing the case. I mean, this really stands out to me. I love the fact that they did a little special logo right there embroidered into the top of the case. Now, as far as the exterior, it's just your regular Fender stuff. Nothing too fancy here. Just a Fender badge bolted on there. And let's see what kind of case candy we've got hiding in here. Regular hang tag with our serial number. Fender online lessons. Case keys and perhaps some other goodies in this little baggie. In the form of our paper COA, as these things normally get, even has the same branding as the case. A warning label about a lacquer finish, that's kind of what makes these interesting, is they are a true nitro finish. So that means as these things age, they'll turn slightly green, which I'm really excited for. Then it looks like we have a bridge cover right here. So maybe that's why I've never noticed that the old ones have a mute, because this one kind of slightly covers over that. Then of course we get a trim bar in here that looks like it's the poppin' style. Then our last piece of case candy. If you buy from Sweetwater, you'll have this nice 55 point inspection. Sweetwater is the sponsor of tonight's episode. Just to be clear, I bought this guitar on my own terms. They just like to sponsor episodes and I like to tie it in with guitars that I naturally buy from them because it just makes sense. But if you're in the market for some new gear or anything like that, they sell a whole bunch of stuff on their website. So you can find band instruments, cables, electric guitars, drum sets. They'll ship it to you anywhere in the US and you can also join their giveaways. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring the Troglies Guitar Show. But now I think it's time for us to take this beauty and throw it on the workbench to take a look at its individual parts and specs. 
let's go! The worst thing about documenting jazz masters and jaguars are the, the fact that they have a hundred million screws making up all their parts. But anyways, I did the full tear down so we can see everything. So jaguar pickups are kind of like Stratocaster pickups, but they have a little bit of a different system here. So you see these things, they're called the claw. And the whole reason that these things are here is they're to help cut down on that 60 cycle single coil hum. So it might look very similar to a Stratocaster pickup, but the biggest difference is the fact that they're mounted directly to the body. That's probably why they have a little bit more of a surround right here. Whereas Stratocaster pickups, they mount to the pick guard themselves. So there's going to be a little bit of a tonal difference just from that. But if we remove one of these covers, I mean, you can see just simple plastics right here. But the pickup inside the casing just looks very similar to a Stratocaster here. It just has that whole metal cage around it. But these are the Pure Vintage 65 Jaguar pickups, which I'm a big fan of the Pure Vintage 65 series of pickups. I really like the Jazz Masters. Those are like my favorite pickups of all time. So I'm interested to see how these things sound if I feel the same way. Because believe it or not, this is actually my first American made Jaguar. I had a Mexican double humbucker, the Ultra Jag we were talking about earlier. And then I mean, I guess if you count the parallel universe weird Jag Strat thing, I guess that's technically a USA one. And then there's the Davy 504 signature version, but this is a full on proper USA made one. But if I didn't know better, just looking at how this thing was wired, I would have thought it was custom shop. Everything has that nice braided wiring to it. But you'll notice that we have these metal plates lining the entire guitar. I think that's for shielding reasons. But if you lift that up, you can see your regular barcodes and just your typical painted over body. So there's our barcode on that one. Then this is just a foam to help set the height of the pickup. Each pickup utilizes two screws and then you just tighten it down to however far you want it. But you might be curious, what is that? Why is that sticking out of the body onto the finish? Isn't that going to cause some damage? Yes, it is. It's going to cause an impression there, but it's there for a reason. And that's because on the back side of this pickup, you have additional shielding. Now, this is actually just like a very similar thin metal plate that's taped to the back side of the pick guard. I'm betting that has something to do with like historical accuracy rather than just using their typical shielding tape. So that's kind of cool to see back here. Before we dive too far into like pickup readings, let's explain some of the circuits in case this is also your first Jaguar. This is known as the rhythm lead circuit. When you have it up in this position, this is pretty much non-existent. It's not working because that's the lead controls. So if you're doing soloing or just the lead guitar in general, not doing all the chords, that's where you're gonna wanna be. However, you have the option. Remember, this is an option. You don't have to use this. I mean, this gets very convoluted and crazy if you let it get there. But when you switch it into the down position, that turns on these wheels. So that is the rhythm circuit. So you can set the individual volume and tone that you want for that. So you can go from, so generally you're either on one or the other if you're just playing at home but if you're a gigging musician you just want to set these to where you need them to be and then always have that that's why it's there so that's just a little slider switch on a metal plate and then you have these two weird things now you might be confused what what are they i mean they're just like little roller things but if you actually take this out of the body you can see they're giant wheels but not only are they giant wheels those are actually just tiny little pots right there mounted sideways on the plate so it's no different from a regular knob on a guitar they're just incognito but this cavity gets the similar metal plate in the bottom and also all cloth wired right here I and mean, this is looking good This is just your master volume and master tone, and then you've got your regular output jack. Nothing too crazy right here. And back here, we also have our cloth wiring with CTS pots, although I don't see the reading on them, and a Switchcraft output jack. And a metal liner down here as well. But where things do get a little bit more complex is you have three slider switches over here. So you're gonna notice you don't have any type of like blade switch or toggle or anything like that. Now, depending on if you're getting a true jag or kind of like one of the more modern modified ones, sometimes you will have like a three-way toggle right here to simplify things. But the original design, this is to control your neck pickup. So you got on and off, on and off for your bridge, but this is a choke. So we'll have to just listen to how that one sounds. But it's like a mid-tone cut. And then the bottom side of this also looks very similar to what we've been seeing in all the other ones. Cloth wiring and all, we just have basic slider switches and a metal plate. So in its truest, simplest form, 
you don't even have to ever worry about that if you don't want to. And then these are your two selectors. So you can have them both on for a middle position, just your neck or just your bridge, and then control it with your regular controls there. Now let's talk about this. So I've never seen this before. So we have a regular Jag bridge right here with our steel saddles. So they're notched all the way, so you can actually move your strings a little bit if you want to. But this whole system normally just plugs into place right there, and sometimes you'll have plastic spacers to do that. And then you've got your trim, and that's how you go. But this one is just a little bit different. So you remember that mute system? This actually goes on before that. And I want to take a good look at this because it's my first time seeing it. So it says patent pending and then fender mute on the side. So all this is is a little piece of foam kind of similar to what we saw in the control cavity. And then on the back, there's this little screw right here. And you'll notice it has a little bit of lubrication jelly on it. That's because in the body, there's like a little metal plate right here that that goes into. And then you just use your hand to manually switch it over so it's just kind of rocking back and forth whether you want it to be on or off and that secures to the body using two screws that you can see the holes right there now just as a forewarning you need the pick guard installed before you actually put these screws through but it just goes in like that and then goes back and forth so that means if you wanted one of these things but you never see yourself using the mute just take it off it's fine you could get another pick guard to cover over the hole but once you put the bridge in there you can't see it anyway. So yes, you can remove that. However, you might want to get those plastic spacers so the bridge doesn't wobble, or maybe you want it to for the whole trim system. I'm not really too familiar with that, to be honest. But completely assembled, it just looks like this. It's the string tension that keeps this from flopping around normally. It's quite the interesting system. I thought for sure there'd be like a spring or something, but no. It's just lubrication jelly, so if that ever gets rough feeling, you probably just need to put a little bit more lubrication under there. So, with the strings on, this mute does not touch any of the strings, so it rings out. But, when you activate that, that touches all the strings, and kind of makes it how if you were to do a palm muting, it just deadens them. And I believe the main purpose for that is if you're doing a lot of palm muting, it saves your hand a little bit. But if you have the metal cover installed, you can no longer palm mute. So maybe that's the true reason of having it there. But there's what it looks like with that cover on it. So now let's talk about one last big gaping hole. It is our trem system. So it's very similar to what you'd find in a Jazzmaster. You can see it gets grounded off in a very similar way to what we were looking at in here. Just a little wire right there. Got a factory barcode here. And now let's look at the system itself. So it says fender on it. Your strings go through the back like this. And then you've got what is underneath here. You've got a giant spring, a little bit of a block, then a couple of extra metal bars. So how these things work is when you're taking them apart, be careful that you only remove the outer screws. So two on the top, two on each side, and then leave those four in the middle alone because they secure the rest of it to it. So this thing helps with tuning stability. When you have this pushed down and properly adjusted, it becomes a down trem only, so you can't pull up on the bar. However, if you push down on the bar and then push this in the up position, now you can go whatever way you want because that block is no longer preventing this from moving up or down. So it's more of a free floating trem. So if you don't find yourself using the trem system too much, just go ahead and make it a down only and that'll help a little bit with tuning stability. So hopefully now you understand what Jaguars are about. They've got a horn up here, they have a little bit of a comfort swoop right here, so it's not a completely hard edge. Then they just have a big bean-like body, I guess you could say. And as far as the specs go, this one has an alder body, and again, this is a gloss nitro finish. A lot of fenders are done up in poly, so they don't age as much, but this is the true nitro stuff, so it will check, it will age, it'll do all the stuff that you want it to. If you want it to look like a vintage guitar one day, anyway. So moving on from the body, we have the neck. I finally pieced it together. I feel so silly. Why this fretboard looks so good to me on this particular example with all the red and the dark streaking, it matches our pick guard almost perfectly. It just needs like a, a little bit of yellow sprinkled in here. That'd be cool. I would love to see somebody do a tortoise shell fretboard, like just make a plastic fretboard that's like lacquered in that. That'd be cool. Again, not all these are going to have a beautiful fretboard like this. I can't guarantee if you order one, you'll get the same. That's why it's great to shop at Sweetwater because you can actually see what guitar you're buying. Now this one was just luck of the draw because I had to pre-order this. Now just because you pre-order something, you can't ask them to send you photos. And if you didn't like any of the ones that show up they'll just send you the next batch 
but they took care of me on this one that's for sure i love it but we've got our block inlays here they're just acrylic they're nothing real as far as like mother of pearl but that's just how fender does them on most of their models this does have a single ply bound fretboard it just makes it look extra fancy for a fender and you've got the black side marker inlays and no those aren't fret nibs you're seeing it was just reflecting the light weird only gibson does weird stuff like that the Jag offers 22 frets on here. They're the vintage tall style. And these actually have a short scale length to them. I'll show you. So many Fender models are up here at 25 and a half inches, including the Ultralux Jag within the same series. But these original cats are only 24 inches. So that's even shorter than Gibson's 24 and three quarter inch. And then it features the really rounded seven and a quarter inch fretboard radius. So that's super vintage specs here. We've even got a bone nut. So now let's measure all that. The nut width is 1.65 inches and increases to 2.02 .02 by the 12th. So a little bit of a skinnier neck in that aspect, but how is our thickness? 0.85 at the first fret neck depth, but chunks up a little bit to 0.97 by the 12th. Here's what that neck looks like at the first fret and the 12th fret. Certainly a rounded C shape, just stays very consistent up and down. The official spec sheet this calls this a 66 Jaguar neck profile. That doesn't mean much to me because I don't know much about Jags. It just kind of feels like a C-shape that's slightly rounded, but gets just a little bit bigger up here. But anyways, moving on to our beautiful matching headstock. Extra blue. If you're wondering why you can see the outline around the decal, that's just how vintage fenders are. So they decide to continue to do them within the USA shop. They could do seamless decals if they really wanted to, but it's a tradition thing and you gotta respect tradition. That's what's kind of interesting about my show. I'm like diehard tradition Gibson guy, but when it comes to fenders, I kind of like the weird, quirky, not very traditional things. But anyways, we've got the vintage style, poke it down, wrap it around style tuners. We've got a single string tree and just reads Fender Jag. But before we get it all strung back up, we do need to talk a little bit more about the fretboard here. So it's called Round Lamb on the website. And you're like, what does farm stock have to do anything with guitars? So that's short for rounded laminated fretboard. So we can't actually see it because of the binding, but this is a laminated fretboard. So it's rather small versus the slab board. Here's a good illustration that shows you the difference between those two. So this isn't a big, thick fretboard by any means. It's rounded and laminated to the top of our maple neck. Now call me crazy, but when I was stringing this back up, I had a great idea. I see this mute thing as, yeah, it's just a cool little function thing. I don't think I would ever actually use it. However, the thing I don't like about Jaguars and Jazz Masters with this style of trem system is sometimes when you're playing, you get like weird ringing buzzing here, especially when you're playing acoustically. Now, sometimes you can get psychedelic with that, but I always like to put some sort of a mute on here. So what I did is I just flipped this the other way around and bam, I have a functional mute for these strings. So I'm gonna demo it like that. It works just fine. And I thought maybe this would be uncomfortable because your hand rests there, but it's not. It's not in the way at all. It's not sharp. It might look a little bit weird because it's not traditional, but that is an option for somebody. Moving on to the backside. Not too much to talk about because it's all top routed for ease of assembly, but you do have a little bit of a comfort cut right here. You have a strap button on your top horn right here, and then another one right here on the bottom directly in the middle. The whole edge of the guitar is pretty well rounded in case you haven't seen one of these before. Very similar to a Stratocaster, just very different body proportions. But here's the neck plate. It holds the serial number dating this one to 2022 and 60th anniversary Jaguar. But unfortunately on here, these stickers were copyrighted 2021 when it says 60th anniversary. <laughs> I feel like they should have made some new ones. So it's a 2022 because I'm sure that'll confuse somebody one day, but these stickers aren't meant to stay on here. Once you remove the plastic covering, it all goes away. But moving on from our blue body, we get a aged natural neck. This is a full gloss finish, so it's not like any ultra modern satin or anything like that. That's a full on gloss. Now, unfortunately, no crazy wood grains or flames or anything like this on this example, but hey, I'll, I'll take that fretboard. That fretboard is a big win in my book. But our tuners back here are the F stamped Fender logos. They're pretty cool looking. 
And in case you're wondering where truss rod access is, because we don't have a skunk stripe, it's at the heel of the neck right there. They kind of sculpt some of the pick guard away, so you should be able to get it without taking the neck off. All said and done, this example weighs 8 pounds, 9.4 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this one sounds. Let's go ahead and run through the tones of this. So that was just the rhythm circuit, but you can also switch to the lead circuit and then that just makes a completely different sound. But I'm going to start with the rhythm. As the name implies, it's more for rhythm stuff. So with the rhythm circuit, these controls don't work, it's just these ones. So this is your volume right here. Then this one is your tone control. That gets extra deep. your pickup selectors do not work on the rhythm circuit it's just that one tone so you just mess with it get what you want and then you just kind of set it and forget it I guess you could say now we'll switch over to the lead circuit that's when all this other stuff starts to come into play so right now I have everything off which is the up position so then closer to me we start to get our neck pickup here and this the whole thing just like brightens up I really dig that middle position. But the bridge has an interesting tone to it as well. Then we also have our choke on this one. So here's just the regular neck pickup. Put that on. Just kind of takes out some of the bass frequencies. That's what I'm hearing. So here it is with it off again. With it on. Of course, you got your volume and tone controls with this as well. Now I guess we can play with our mute. So normally it would sound like this. For normal palm muting. Activate this. I'm really glad I swapped that back around. It's different from regular palm muting. It's a little bit more percussive and bright sounding. There's a 60s song that goes like something like that. All right, 
right, let's try some distortion. demoing this guitar because of all these flips and switches. It's hard to keep track of what I've demoed or not, let alone play anything. So I'm just gonna switch to the bridge and have some fun here. <laughs> else from this review it's that string mutes are kind of cool at first it just sounds like okay a different way to palm mute but whenever I palm mute anyways I kind of have to be a little bit less aggressive <laughs> about the only thing you miss is you can't really accent the note necessarily but you can go crazy so it kind of gives you just a different tone with that <laughs> Now that we know all about the 60th anniversary Jaguar, what are my final thoughts on this thing? A very interesting beast. Now, if you get this and approach it like any other guitar, you're going to be a little bit disappointed, I think, because that's how I was at first trying to figure all this stuff out. But once I got it and just stopped fiddling with the switches, set it up to what I wanted it to sound like, just started to hammer away, it really was inspirational, especially this mute. I had no idea that was even on these guitars, let alone on this reissue when I had ordered it. But that was such a sweet surprise. You get some interesting tones using that mute that's different than just regular palm muting. So for that aspect, yeah, I would definitely suggest putting a string mute on one of your guitars and just trying it. While I was playing this, I actually noticed there is a small neck pocket crack in this, and I was tempted to return this, but you know, it was a moral dilemma. Do I keep it because of the fretboard or not? However, to my surprise, these have already been discontinued. I didn't realize that when recording this. So I really see these things becoming future collectibles one day because they did not leave these things in production for very long and the blues like sold out everywhere. Now, as far as how it feels to play, I'm not gonna say it was my favorite. I mean, this is 24 inch scale length. Maybe it's some of that when I'm used to a little bit longer. And these things always just have a really abnormally slinky feel to them. So it's great if you like that, but I think that comes down to the tremolo system. I will say, I don't think I like the Jaguar pickups as much as regular single coils. I mean, sure, they did not appear to hum anywhere near as much, but in that aspect, it sounded like a single coil, but yet it drove my amp just about as hard as a humbucker would. I've been finding my Marshall blues breaker i really enjoy single coils running through it and this didn't quite have that same tone it definitely reminded me a little bit more of some humbuckers in that aspect even though that's not what these are but anyways troglodytes i hope you enjoyed checking out the new 60th anniversary fender jaguar with me today don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one take care